Good morning, this is Eric from the African Homestead. Welcome back. Well, it uh, rained all night. It's been raining all morning. It's about eight o'clock now and it's just letting up. But from the look of the sky, it may be another one of those what we call all day rain. It's just overcast and gray and it may rain all day. But my time frame here is short. Um, I've got just a couple weeks that I'm going back to the States for a month and then I'm coming back and I'll have basically four months to build a house, build a water tower, get the container set in place, drill a well for the water tower, and a lot of other things. So time is really short. So we're gonna work in the rain today. Liberia has a saying, I learned this a, a week ago. Hun <laughs> Sorry about the background noise. Hungry man can't let the rain stop work. And so that means that, you know, there's, there's guys here that, um, you know, Normally I would say, hey, it's raining today. I, I don't I don't want to bother you guys with working in the rain. It's treacherous and they're like, you know, we need the money and it's a rainy season, so let's work. And so that's where we're at today. We're, we're gathering up a few guys to help go up to the building site. And so we're gonna head there in a little bit. And thanks for joining along today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. No, bye-bye. Welcome. Well, we finally made it to the building site. It's like 11 o'clock. Uh, we had a little trouble getting guys assembled to work this morning, but we're here now and it hasn't been raining for at least a couple hours. So the, it's overcast, it's cool. That was my prayer for today was, was no rain, overcast, cool, it's great for working. And uh, so far this is the way it's, at least the way we're starting out. So let me turn the camera around, but uh, I'm here. I got, I got my machete ready to work and let me turn it around. So what we're gonna do, these are the trees to the east side of the property that I showed you. We're gonna start in that area, just at the base of this grove, and we're just gonna start cutting this vegetation, all this bush across this way, heading to the west. And so right now I'm standing on our, on our little road that leads up to the property, and that's the direction we're heading today. Pro tip, when you're in the African bush and you're cutting, you need to sharpen your cutlass, your machete. Have one of these along. Sanding disc on a cordless grinder, the flapper type disc. I think these are 80 grit. Things will sharpen it, almost sharp enough to shave the hair off your arms. So, and I'm not shaving the hair off my arms, but it's really useful here and these, when I sharpen them, they'll, depending on how they're, how they're used, they're, they're good for a couple hours. And so uh, the other option is a hand file, but I just find this is really quick and it gives a nice sharp edge. 60 seconds later, super sharp. So one other time I showed you something called sawgrass that I ended up getting a pretty good cut. It's all healed up now, but I got into some sawgrass when we were working here before. But now there's something that is a type of vine they call thorny rope and it makes sawgrass look pretty weak. Let me see if I can turn this around and focus in on it. But this is the, uh, the thorny rope. As you can see, if you go running through the bush and this catches a hold of you, you're gonna be in huge trouble. This stuff is all over the place here. And so as we're in here, this is the edge of the tree grove. And this is just covered, there's some sawgrass right there. This is just covered in thorny rope and sawgrass. So we're, uh, we're making good progress. We're, we're working a lot slower than we did before uh, because we're not, le we're not wanting to leave a lot of the spiky stumps. So all of these are sticking up. I'm gonna come back with my chainsaw and cut those off. But all the small ones we're cutting as we go. So you can see, we're making some progress today. The group is pretty small, but uh, we're working hard. Well, the breeze just kicked up, which usually means there's some rain on the horizon. I can't hear from here. That's one thing yesterday that I noticed, I forgot to mention, is, you know, I've been living in the city for almost seven years, and it's just constant noise day and night. And so it's so cool here that I can hear rain falling in the forest, like more than a half mile away. And it just sounds like a waterfall in the distance. And so it's just, I love it, how quiet it is out here. 
but uh, I wanted to make a quick update before the rain came. We'll keep working through it, but I don't want to get the phone out during that time. But we're making great progress. We've been working at it, I think a little over two hours now. And there's uh, one, two, three, four, five and a half. I'm like a half a man compared to these guys working at it. And then we have a couple teenagers. And I tell you what, it's no different here than in the States. Getting a teenager boy to um, work hard sometimes can be a little challenging, but I've been uh, encouraging them. But let me turn the camera around and I'll show you. So the first shot this morning was, there was just a little corridor right here. And so since that time, we've cleared all this area here. And uh, guys are working really hard and doing really well. And so you can see how much we've done here. Um, I mean, it's not a huge amount. We're taking our time. Unlike the other area where we came in and cut all the trees, then we came back and cleaned up the brush. Then we were going to come back and de-stump. What we're trying to do here is clean up the brush as we're going and take all the, cut all the small stumps off at ground level. And then uh, the bigger ones, I'm going to come back with my chainsaw and cut down. I think I may have mentioned that a little bit ago, but uh, do that maybe tomorrow morning. And so what we're doing with all the brush, uh, just like before, we're going to turn that into compost. And so on the edge of the, uh, the trees here, we're just going to pile it up all along this edge. And as the, uh, as the rain falls and uh, the bugs come in and work and all the micro, micro, I'm tired, microbiological activity comes in and breaks this down. It's going to be a very um, fungal rich compost because there's a lot of woody material with the leaves. And then as we uh, clear the land, you know, any topsoil uh, that I want to pile up, I'll probably pile up over here on top of this just to help break that down faster. So, pleased with how it's going, and we're just going to keep working. It's uh, mid-afternoon now, so we have a couple more hours of work, probably another two or three hours of work before we take a break for the day. The goal is, by the time we're done, have this palm tree over here, and that's where the ground is starting to slope down to the south. I want to clear all the way to that palm tree, and then at least as far as these two palm trees over here. And once we get there, I'll have a good idea what the site looks like, how level it is. Um, it's possible the, the land remains level that direction, so we may end up pushing back a little bit further. But uh, you can see even as the road continues here, it actually starts going downhill just right at the curve of the road. I don't know if you can even see it, but a little ways beyond my land cruiser. Pro tip number two. If you're a city boy, you're not used to using a machete, bring some gloves along. I didn't think about that until I've been working here for about an hour and a half. I can feel the blisters coming in, but uh, the rest of the day I'm going to have these gloves on. It's always good to keep an eye out on things as you're cutting through. We end up finding a tree that produces a, a fruit that's locally used that's fairly valuable. Um, and so we left that tree. I told them the policy on this farm is that uh, if you can eat it, we keep it. And if, it's, if it has no food value to it, uh, we, we cut it down. Now, there is an exception to every rule, and that's what we just discovered behind me. I was looking at this tree and I was thinking about John Keisner did a video some time ago on how to identify nitrogen fixing bushes and trees. And he talked about you know how how to do that by looking at the leaves, looking at the roots, looking at the if they have seed pods, those kinds of things. Well, I was looking at this tree behind me, and let me just show it to you. So I was looking at this tree, and and the leaves. And one of the guys with me said that's a locust. And you know I don't know uh, if there's a, a a tropical locust, but uh, and I asked him, does it make seed pods? He says, yeah, it makes seed pods. In fact, they sometimes roast them. He says you have to really roast it for a long time. And they can also extract oil from the seeds. But, you know, I re quickly realized this is a great uh, nit nitrogen fixing tree. So I just quickly, you know, cut, a, cut one off and talked about the concept of chop and drop. And so I'm pretty excited that, you know, we have these on the land. And I've seen them around, I just wasn't sure what they were. 
so I'm encouraged by the fact that they call it locust and I don't know the, exactly what type of locust it is, but I'm, you know, nearly 100% sure that this is going to be in addition to the farm to help us improve the nitrogen in the soil, in addition to, you know, cow peas and other legumes that we're going to be planting, in addition to the moringa we're going to be planting. This is just a, another nice addition to the farm. So even though we're chopping this one down, there's a lot around, and so I'll be propagating those in the future. Well, that's it for today. Let me just turn this around, let you see. You see we cleared over here by the grove. I look forward to, uh, we're actually gonna cut into that and clear some area. I mean, it's really thick jungle in there, but I wanna clear some area in the center of that grove and build a bench, maybe a tree house, and uh, just have that as a place during the heat of the dry season. We can go in there and just relax in the shade and the cool temperatures. And then uh, you can see we didn't cut the stumps like I was hoping to. I'm gonna come tomorrow, gonna have a lot of work getting those cut out and uh, taking the, the chainsaw and cutting. But uh, I'd say all in all, we had a really good day today. We got quite a bit, I would say more than a quarter acre. Yeah, you know, that's like five and a half guys and machetes. And we cleared all this up. And you can see by looking over here just how thick it is. Really thick. So what, what the goal is tomorrow is we have a couple palm trees over there. You can see right there. We want to we want to at least clear the land that far. And then over to this palm tree over here, that's where the uh, the hillside starts sloping down. And then back behind here, there's another palm tree that we're kind of using as an outline. And uh, I'm really excited. The breeze, as we've been working today and clearing this, the breeze has just gotten better and better. I'm really excited to the view we're gonna have. As you can see, there in the background, there's a mountain and there's gonna be a bamboo I don't know, is that a grove? I don't know what you call a bunch of bamboo, but anyway, gonna have that. But really looking forward to, how do I, there, perfect. So that's it for today. Let me flip this back around. I've had ants in my hair all day. I know I don't have much, but I've had ants in my hair all day. But uh, as Art likes to say, it's been another great day on the homestead. So I'm gonna finish this village vlog up and uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for coming along. Bye-bye.